Well, we're going down in scale again now, and we're thinking about the blood supply to the lungs at a microscopic level, smaller than the intralobular, smaller than the intralobular artery. And after about uh, 24 or 25 divisions, we get down to very small bronchial passages, the bronchioles. And these have swellings in their wall like this. And what these swellings do is they increase the surface area inside the bronchial passage. Because at this level, these are called respiratory bronchioles, very small bronchial passages respiratory bronchioles respiratory bronchioles and we have these air sacs on the side of them to increase the surface area now one of these is called an alveolus So alveolus is singular. Several of them would be called uh, alveoli. So one alveolus, two or three or four or five alveoli. Now the respiratory bronchiole is the first place that the surface area is increased by these uh, alveolar air sacs. And also it's the first place as we go down into the bronchial tree that the walls are thin enough to allow the gaseous exchange to take place. And the respiratory bronchiole will carry on breaking down a little bit more into very small respiratory bronchioles. I'm not going to draw all the alveoli on there. And these small, very small ducts here are called the alveolar ducts. The alveolar ducts. And these go towards these classical clusters of alveoli, the air sacs, the so-called alveolar sacs. And these greatly, of course, increase the surface area. About 70 square meters uh, per lung of surface area. very large surface area over which gaseous exchange can take place. Now these units here are called the uh, pulmonary lobules, the microscopic lobules, because they're, they're actually uh, enclosed in an elastic tissue sac. And in one of these, sprouting from one of these respiratory bronchioles, you might have between two and 11 individual alveolar ducts. And this tissue here, this elastic connective tissue is between the, um, the different pulmonary lobules. So it's the, in, it, this, this is called the uh, uh, interlobular. The interlobular uh, sacs of elastic tissue. So that's kind of what's going on. But of course we're interested in the uh, blood supply and the arterial blood supply of course is going in and the arterial blood supply pretty well follows these, uh, these bronchial structures. So this is the arterial blood supply taking blood to the alveoli. Pulmonary capillaries will branch off around these uh, alveolar spaces here in the respiratory bronchioles. And once we get down to the alveolar air sacs, they're going to break down into networks of capillaries that are going to surround the air sacs. And it's here that the gaseous exchange is going to take place. So we're going to get uh, oxygenated blood here from these pulmonary capillaries covering the surface of the alveoli getting oxygenated as they go through and then these are going to connect up into 
other vessels. These small vessels here are going to be uh, venules. And these venules are going to connect up and are going to leave the going to leave the pulmonary uh, lobule. So what we actually have in a pulmonary lobule is we have a uh, arteriole taking blood in. So this is a pulmonary arteriole here. And we have a pulmonary venule leaving. With its uh, highly oxygenated blood. So the blood's going in here in the pulmonary arteriole and then out via the pulmonary venule. And this pulmonary arteriole here is going to branch off from an intralobular artery. And this pulmonary venule is going to connect up to an interlobular vein to drain back into the progressively larger veins, the subsegmental, the segmental, the loba, and then into the pulmonary veins. And this is all elastic. All the lungs are incredibly elastic. There's lots of elastic tissue in the lungs. Um, now, also um, draining here, there's going to be uh, lymphatics. There's going to be lymphatic capillaries as well. And again, they're going to join up to form a lymphatic vessel. So what we have in the uh, individual, that's a lymphatic vessel there draining lymphatic tissue fluid. So what we have going into one of these uh, pulmonary lobules is we have the respiratory bronchial passage. We have an arteriole. Uh, an arteriole in blue taking blood in, a venule in red taking blood out, and we have a lymphatic drainage vessel taking you know, lymphatic drainage fluid out as well. So a pulmonary lobule is the lung tissue distal to the respiratory bronchioles. That's what one of these pulmonary lobules are. And the whole thing is elastic. So not only is there elastic tissue around about the, uh, the lobules, the elastic connective tissue, but the walls of the oli, uh, alveoli are also elastic. So when, when they blow up, they're going to squeeze the air out of, of their own accord, facilitating expiration. Now, I think I'll just show you a few more um, pictures from this one's from the Physiology Notes book. Quite a handy source of pictures. And uh, here we see the terminal bronchiole, as we know, taking the air in. The air going into the alveoli. And then the air going out through the same passage during expiration. So the air going in and out. Here we have an alveolus. These are respiratory bronchioles because they're small enough to allow the gaseous exchange to take place. On this diagram, this would be the uh, alveolar duct here, taking the air from the from the uh, alveolar duct to the uh, alveolar to the alve alveolar air sacs. And when we look at the alveoli, they're actually, what, what, what I've got in this diagram here is these are the alveolar air sacs here. So let me just hatch in this. This is all, this is all air in here. This is the airspace in there. And the walls of the alveoli are just surrounded by pulmonary capillaries. So I'm going to draw all these in red, but these are the pulmonary capillaries surrounding the, uh, the alveolus, facilitating this process of gaseous exchange. So the oxygen going from the air sac into the blood, the 
carbon dioxide going from the blood into the air sac for expiration. And here's another diagram from the Physiology Notes book. So we can see here that we've got the air going in and out. So air high in oxygen going in, air low in carbon dioxide going in. And the air we breathe in is about 20.84% oxygen, just under 21% oxygen, and 0.04% carbon dioxide. And then by the time we breathe the air out, it's gone down to 16% oxygen and 4% uh, and carbon dioxide. So the air is going in, round about the alveoli, and then being breathed out there. And here we have the... Uh, we have the red blood cells. These are the erythrocytes here going through the pulmonary capillary. So they're the red blood cells high in haemoglobin. And here we see we've got blood from a branch of the pulmonary artery taking blood in. So blood from a branch of the pulmonary artery, high in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. So this is the deoxygenated blood coming in this side. But then we get the movement of oxygen into the blood. And we get the movement of carbon dioxide out from the blood. And the blood becomes more oxygenated as it passes through the pulmonary capillary until the blood which is leaving is going to be high in oxygen and uh, low in carbon dioxide. This is the process of gaseous exchange. So in orange I'll just draw the walls of the capillary. This is the pulmonary capillary here. Down there. That's the pulmonary capillary. It's a good, good thing about black and white diagrams. You can colour them in, which is nice colouring them in yourself. <laughs> and uh, in, in pink, healthy lungs are pink, as it would happen. Um, there we have the thin wall of the alveolus. All with squamous tissue, of course, and this process of gaseous exchange going on between the uh, alveolar air sac and the blood. Then, once the oxygenated blood is the blood's picked up, the oxygen is going to drain back in the pulmonary veins, as we've said. So the blood gets to the the blood arrives in the pulmonary artery via the main pulmonary trunk, the right main pulmonary artery, the interlobar artery, the lobar artery, the segmental, the subsegmental, then the intralobular to finally get down to this level. All following this amazing fractal pattern to make sure that all of the ends are equally supplied with air in the case of the bronchial passages and blood in the case of the vasculature. So what we've been talking about now are these little bits right at the very end, at the very small microscopic and uh, virtually microscopic scale and the microscopic scale. The capillaries of course are at the full microscopic scale. And the end all, all of the end capillaries are all supplied with the same amount of blood because of this uh, fractile distribution. <laughs>